This is a story about my ancestors who lived in 50 BCE in the northern forest of Europe while Julius Caesar was going to war against them as a young general. I chose this time period because it's well documented by many scholars who worked for Julius Caesar who needed to understand the mind and the lives of his enemies. My ancestors were fierce and very loving individuals, according to Julius Caesar scholars. They were such a powerful fighting force that he was afraid that maybe, just maybe, if they had the mind to, they could easily go through his legions and march all the way to Rome, as they had 300 years previous. They were known by him as the Germanians, but there were many tribes, the Celts, the Chaetan, Trusians, and over 200 others. They were close to the forest in the way that the American Indians were close to nature. For them, the land was as beautiful as their own mother. And that is why Julius Caesar said he had such difficulty trying to defeat them. They considered the earth like their mother or a lover. They also had a loyalty to the clan, each one of their families, that his own men lacked. This story is about two characters that I've made the names up, and I know I had I know I had ancestors, a grandma and a grandpa. So I've named them Rosalind and Siegelbert, who met when they were four and six, grew up next to each other on their parents' ranches. They were valiant warriors, brilliant thinkers, horse people and healers and soulmates, who when they met, eventually married and stayed together till their life was finished. This is the story about how Rosalind met Pathfinder, her horse. Children know, Rosalind did. As a child of three, she could sense the thoughts and feelings of her father's horses as though she was walking through a forest, seeing each thought like a tree. It was a gift that was passed on from her grandmother through her father to herself. The gift was that she could sense that everything in her world was alive and was talking. It was in this way that she could navigate into her world, by listening. It was from the horses on her father's ranch that she learned that there was an intelligent community around her, noticing her in the same way that she was noticing them. She could feel the trees, the water, and the horses. Among her father's horses, there was a stallion. It was in the year of her third summer that the granddaughter, Rosalind, had wandered out of her parents' bed in the light of the full moon. It was under the watchful eyes of the night owls, but unseen by the gate watchman who rose in and out of sleep, that she wandered to the corral where the great stallion was separated from his herd. She slipped under the corral fence and into his world. Rosin did not see the stallion as horse. She saw him as a living being, like her own parents, or any person in her village, but different, part human, part horse. And perhaps this is why the horse did not feel anger. He did not want to chase her out as he had the ranchers who had entered this gate for months previous. This little girl was communicating with him as though she knew him. She walked directly to him in a way that made him relax. His mind told him that she was a human child, and yet, when she came close, memories of his own child surfaced. Memories of how earlier that year, in the highlands, his coat had died under an avalanche of snow and debris that had fallen from a mountain. Several young horses from his herd had been buried, and it was while he and the other members of his herd were attempting to kick and gouge the snow free, trying to unbury the young ones, that he was captured and pulled away from his child's rescue. Many of his herd were captured because they would not, they could not run away from their own buried children. That's why he hated these humans so deeply. Yet, as she moved closer, he felt as though she was recalling the memory of his own lost son and helping him carry the weight of that loss. When her small fingers touched his leg, the painful memory became calm. For her part, the horse felt familiar, like an uncle long lost, now found. She walked directly up to him, touching the hooves with her little fingers, stroking his legs with her small puppy hands, each gesture reassuring him that she was a friend. He stood there, utterly at peace with the thought that somehow he was strangely enough reunited with his own child in her each touch. Everything about her movements, her way of looking, her tender nudges against his legs with her face, 
reminded him of his own child, and this memory caused him to feel reunited. It was as though the spirit of his child was somehow in this little person. She continued to stroke the fur on his legs with her small fingers until she felt sleepy. The following morning, her father, mother, and her uncle found Rosalind asleep under the stallion, standing so still above her. With great care, the mother stepped up and very slowly retrieved her child's sleeping form. He stood calm, watching them as they closed the gate behind them. Should you want to see the show where these paintings are being exhibited, give me a call. My number is 707-888-3269. The paintings are located here in Sonoma at the Sonoma Holistic Center, and I can set up a private tour.